Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a new video, this time about Azure Kubernetes Services or AKS. More specifically, what we want to do in this video is simply try to deploy a very simple containerized application to AKS or Azure Kubernetes Services without even touching the Azure portal. So everything that we'll do here is from the Azure CLI. Before we get started, I just want to say that uh, if you are experienced with AKS or if you worked with a Kubernetes, I think that this video might not be very useful for you. But if you only have a hunch about uh, how what containers are, what uh, orchestrators are like uh, Kubernetes and how they would be useful uh, for our applications, then I think that this video might be exactly uh, what you're looking for. Because throughout this video, we'll go to the steps that we will need to take to deploy an application consisting of two different containers to an AKS cluster on Azure that we'll create right now from the CLI and we'll go also to this YAML file and see exactly what we define here because how we actually explain to Kubernetes or to AKS in this case what we actually want to do because this is I guess the most important part. So let's get started with it and the first thing that we would need to do is of course a login to our Azure subscription. And of course this would open a login screen and I would choose the account that I would like to use for login and right now this means that I should be logged in and right now Azure is retrieving all the subscriptions that I have access to and this is actually the only subscription that I really need right now. So let's clear the screen and uh, see exactly what, uh, what we can do from here. So the first thing that we would need to do, of course, I, as I said, everything is from scratch. So I don't have an Azure resource group. I don't have anything. So we have to create them. So let's go on and uh, let's create a resource group to be a AZ uh, group create. Then we would have to specify the name and let's call it my AKS cluster. And we would have to specify a location and I will choose the location that would most probably uh, be the closest to me, which would be West Europe right now. And that would create the resource group. Usually it doesn't really take long to create a resource group because it's just a meta uh, a metadata, just some information uh, that really collects all your resources that have to, to perform a certain task. So what we can do right now is, uh, well, we have the resource group, we have to create the Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, we have uh, the AZ AKS from Azure Kubernetes Services. And then of course we have uh, the create command. Then we would have to specify some information, of course, first of all, uh, the resource group to which we want to deploy this cluster. And this would be my AKS uh, cluster. Then we would have to specify the name of the application. And let's call this application voting app and I will explain why we call it voting app just in a few seconds because it might take a little bit longer for this uh, resource to create for, for this Kubernetes cluster. So in the meantime, we will go through the YAML file that we have here and then we'll also understand why we name this application voting app. Then another important thing that we can specify when we want to create an AKS resource is a node count. So how many nodes do we want in our AKS cluster? Let's choose one in this case. And the reason why I choose one, of course I could even choose two or three or four or uh, whatever number would, would be really suitable for, for my application and the load that I would expect to that application. But bear in mind that here the node count really uh, implies a, a lot of costs. Because the reason is the uh, Azure usually doesn't charge at all for the AKS service. So Azure just offers you this Azure Kubernetes services as a platform as a service, I would say. So you can simply deploy it without uh, without the need to manually install agents and, and, and other stuff on the nodes. So everything is done by Azure and it's actually done for free. But what you are paying for is the actual compute that you use. So basically, if you create here two nodes, this means that uh, this will create two virtual machines. So in this case, we will pay or I will pay for these two virtual machines or for all the costs that these two virtual machines were, would incur to my subscription. So that's why we should be a little bit careful with, uh, with the node count. I guess two nodes would be uh, just okay for, for starting. And I would like to enable some add-ons and there is this command enable add-ons. Let's maybe go a little bit higher up so that you can 
uh, better see what what I'm talking about. So I would like to enable add-ons, and the add-ons that I the add-on that I want to enable is the monitoring, because I want to be able to monitor how the deployment of my application uh, works, uh, what my IPs are, so that we will be able to actually test our application that is deep or after it is deployed to the AKS cluster. And then there is one other important thing that we would need to provide is this generate uh, SSH keys because we would need uh, to connect basically to our AKS cluster which will uh, run on Linux uh, from our CLI. So in this case we would also need those uh, SSH keys. So let's uh, let's run this uh, this command right now. And okay, what? Uh, I have probably mistyped something here and here I would have enable add-ons of course of course it's dash dash sorry for that and right now I guess that it should uh, it should work and here yeah finish service principle so this means actually that uh, my deployment has already started and as said that could really take a while depending on how many nodes you have and in the meantime I would just make the terminal a little bit smaller and I would like to talk a little bit about this YAML file that, that we have here. So as you can see, I, I've already prepared this azure-vote.yaml file. And when you deploy something to Kubernetes in general, and of course, uh, when you do this uh, with uh, Azure Kubernetes services, it's exactly the same. You have to kind of describe to Kubernetes exactly what do you want to do, or exactly what do you want to run in, the, in this cluster. And usually uh, here you have to define all the the containers that you need to run and how you want to expose them, how containers should communicate between them and so on. And when we define our Kubernetes infrastructure or what we actually want to do in our uh, AKS service, there are two type of things that we have to define in, in this YAML file as really a basis uh, for our application to work. And first of all, we have to define deployments. Our application is based on some containers that are publicly available via the Docker Hub already. So it's not something that, that I have developed myself, but I just want to, to use the applications that were developed for, for this kind of, of, of demos. And uh, in this case, we'll basically connect to, to Docker Hub, uh, get the, the images from there, and we'll look exactly into what images we'll get from there. And then of course, run them in our AKS cluster. So a deployment in Kubernetes just describes exactly what Kubernetes needs to do. So what container it, what container it, it needs to download, it needs to build, uh, how many replicas do you want to use for that containers, uh, then different other type of information like uh, how should, uh, should this type of, of container be named, like a simple metadata. And in this case, we have, as I said, a very basic voting app, which has a backend, which uh, is in one container or in one image and it has also a front end that of course it uh, it, it, it is placed in, in a different image that we will download for from a different registry. And then of course uh, in this spec in the specifications for the deployment that, that we have uh, of course we define the replicas, uh, we define labels, uh, we define uh, templates that we need and then the most important part that we have here is these containers and here we have to specify for instance the name of the container and then to specify the image and in this case uh, AKS will probably uh, or will surely just look in, in Docker Hub and try to find uh, this type of container and try to build it. And here we can also or even define some type of resources that we want to make available for, for this container and we can uh, let's say define a default for requests and we can set also some limits of CPU and, and memory. And then of course we uh, specify also the ports and this is important because this means that uh, this uh, backend voting app service will be internally exposed uh, through this port 6379, which is a very, very important thing. Now, for each deployment that we have, it's important that we also define a service. And this is, as I said, a very, very important part. Because as you might know, uh, Kubernetes usually works with pods. So this means that for each deployment that, that we specify here, at any given moment in time, Kubernetes could run one or several ports. And the pod configuration could be different from one moment to a different moment. But over this different type of how Kubernetes in internally handles the pods 
how it creates pods, how it destructs pods and so on. We need kind of like something that sits on top of it like an abstraction that would always make sure that our application could connect or will connect uh, to uh, pods that are 100% uh, there and that, that work, that, that don't have problems and so on. And that's why we have to define this type of services, which is like an abstraction over uh, the deployment that we define here. Meaning that if we define here this service, uh, Kubernetes will ensure that we will always uh, have this backend service available through this port 6379. No matter how many pods are there in the backend, it really doesn't or we don't really care about that. But this is why we have to kind of specify this, uh, this type of service for each deployment that we have. And then of course we have the second deployment which is for the front end which once again we have some uh, metadata with some name and we have these uh, specifications and so on the only thing that i want to point out here is once again in containers uh, we say that we want the container azure vault front and the image is microsoft azure vault front uh, with the tag view one so the first version and then we specify the, the the resources that we need the limits that we want to put and in this case that we want to have the container port 80 open and then here in this service or uh, the service belonging basically to this uh, type of deployment that we defined previously we say once again it's a kind service it's uh, an abstraction over uh, this type of deployment meaning that uh, kubernetes would guarantee us that no matter how many pods or how it handles pods we will always have uh, uh, this port 80 available for our uh, voting app front application now here there is one thing that is a little bit different from from the the, the previous service service or the, the backend service and this is that we have here this type load balancer this actually is a very uh, cool uh, thing to do because uh, kubernetes uh, usually is hosted in different uh, cloud environments in our case it's hosted in azure and hence also the name of azure kubernetes services but it could also run in different uh, other cloud services and usually when you run this type of application or when you specify that for a certain uh, service that it is the of type load balancer, this would usually all also create on the infrastructure side, I would say, on the cloud service where this cluster runs a load balancer that would uh, ba basically uh, balance the load between uh, the different uh, nodes or pods and so on. So we use this in order to be able or to make sure that we will also have a load balancer in in azure so that we could basically balance the load through different instances of our front-end application running so right now we see that uh, everything is done so our aks cluster uh, should be created right now one there is one thing that uh, that we still need to do here is um, we need to install the aks uh, cli or the kubernetes cli which is uh, called kubectl and we can achieve this uh, simply by running Azure AKS install CLI. And that would install the kubectl uh, CLI. And through that kubectl CLI, we would be able to manage our AKS cluster that we have just created. However, there is one other thing that uh, we need to do or a last thing to do before we can really deploy our application. And we just need to get the credentials uh, basically to be able to connect to our uh, Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, we would have uh, az uh, aks. Then here we would have the command get uh, credentials. And for this command, of course, we would have also to uh, specify the resource group. And that would be my aks cluster in our case. And we would also have to specify the, the name of the application. And we gave the name when we created the cluster and it was the voting app. So right now we ran this command and uh, different object name already exists in your Kubernetes file, override it. Uh, yes, I would say I would like to override it. Let's override it once again. And right now, basically we can uh, kubectl get nodes. Of course I mistyped it, uh, kubectl get nodes. This is only to, to test that, uh, that our kubectl is, is correct and in, indeed we see that we have uh, two different nodes as we specified when we wanted to, uh, to, to, to create our uh, AKS cluster and that's actually what we need right now. So I guess we are right now set up and we can just 
simply deploy this application to our AKS cluster. And this is actually uh, very easily. So we will need the kubectl, uh, the kubectl uh, CLI and we will specify simply apply. So we want to apply a certain YAML file and we also have to specify the file and this would be azure-vote.yaml. Uh, so right now, basically we see that uh, the deployment was created and uh, our application actually should right now be deploying to AKS. Let's uh, clear the screen and also uh, let's see if we can um, get the service. So we will run in this case uh, kubectl because we want to see the state of the service right now. And uh, here get uh, service is the comment that we need to run and here the service that we want to access is the Azure vote front and remember uh, remember the names or the selectors that, that we gave uh, to these uh, services and I want to watch this service and here if we watch the service right now we see that it is of type load balancer which means that in Azure or Azure created also a load balancer uh, for us uh, behind uh, the hood or uh, under the scenes and we have here also an external IP address and actually what this means is that theoretically if we go right now in a browser and uh, try to go to this IP address you can see that we actually can view our application and here we can start to vote or for cats for dogs whatever we can then reset the vote and we can uh, vote again and so on as I said it's it is a very very basic application a very very simple application but uh, we deployed it from the Azure CLI we created the AKS cluster for it and everything was done automatically without even touching uh, the portal so right now actually uh, that's basically it what we can do here is press, press uh, Ctrl C to exit uh, the, the watch and of course uh, before we, we end this video that's something that I would also encourage you to always do when you simply test around especially when you test around with services that, uh, that might uh, cost a little bit just like uh, in our case we have basically two virtual machines for which we would have to pay so we can just uh, clean up the resources and we can achieve this by simply uh, az group uh, delete then the name of the group that i want to delete it would be my aks cluster and i don't want to to wait i say yes I want to delete it and I say no wait. I don't want to, to wait here until the service gets deleted. Maybe I want to do something else. So I just run it. Uh, my resource group will be now deleted or Azure will start to, to delete my resource group and my entire AKS cluster. This could take a few minutes. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense to, to just wait here. So I guess that's it. Uh, we managed to deploy a very simple containerized application uh, to a brand new AKS service, so a brand new AKS cluster that we created using our uh, Azure CLI and we deployed uh, this very simple application running on two different containers to our cluster and we were able to, to actually test it and uh, actually access the application via a browser window which is actually very very cool and if you want to get started with kubernetes that's really everything about how you should deploy something of course this is only a uh, a foundation on which you can then build it on top because there are a lot of things that can get complicated so kubernetes is not really very very simple but complexity comes when you have to to add more complex applications because you might want to mount data volumes because you might also persist data you might want to uh, also configure an advanced networking and define exactly how uh, different uh, uh, services or different deployments should communicate between them and uh, different other things that are really really important but as I said this is a very good foundation of starting building your first or deploying your applications if you build applications on containers this is really a very very important step on how you can deploy them because if you already have an application maybe a side project or anything that you have worked on on uh, or uh, that is published uh, to a container registry uh, then you can simply just go ahead and deploy your application to AKS uh, just using the CLI as we did here in this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you there back uh, for the next video. Bye!